across the creek, but I'm sitting up behind this dead, dead log here in this little meadow. Yesterday morning, the bird that you can hear cut me off here was strutting out in the middle of this field, so I'm not 100% sure, but from half a mile to a mile away, it looked like he had really red wings. So it, it could be a red phase. That thing has been gobbling for 30 minutes, non-stop losing his mind. There's a part in the video, I don't know if you can, if the camera picked it up, but he gobbled for like four seconds straight. It's just like a bum, 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 bum. I don't know, it's the weirdest gobble I've ever heard. Like he really drawn it out, but <laughs> I'm set up. I think I'm in a great spot. I've got the DSD in. I've got three DSD ends and a Dakota Jake. I decided not to do the, the strutter decoy because about a week ago there was a blind about 100 yards from where I'm sitting. And I was really afraid that whoever was sitting there was going to smoke this guy. But I think he might, they might have got his two buddies that were with him. So that being said, I anticipate him to be a little leery of decoys. So I decided not to do the DSD strutter. But he is hammering. Hammering. I mean, he does not. He's got to take a breath. Anyway, I'm excited. If this is the bird that I think it is and he works in, I'm going to be very, very pumped. Red faced Eastern. I mean, he is hammering. across the creek. What is going on? Yeah, he's on a mission now. He's ready to go. Get through that fence. We'll have half the battle won. Yeah, turkeys can be when it comes to offense. Bingo. That's half the battle right there. Now we got a crick to cross.
it finally makes sense. There was two hens. Imagine that. And they're going the other way. Perfect. All right. Heads into the afternoon hunt. This morning I was set up down below where I'm sitting tonight. I'm set up on the hill kind of where that gobbler pitch down. And I first saw him. Man, he was gobbling his head off. All kinds of fired up. Then he came down the hill, across the fence, across the creek. I thought it was a game over. Um, but that's not what happened, so. Anywho, gonna slip in here real quick, get set up without a blind, and hopefully catch him coming back to roost. We'll see what happens. All right, <laughs> exactly where I left these birds this morning. They're on top of the hill working their way this way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the train to my advantage. I've gotta slip down alongside this timber, take it down to the bottom where I wanna set up, get the decoys out real fast, build a blind, and they are moving, so. They're about a mile away right now, but they are coming this way, and they can be here in like 20 minutes if they wanted to. Sweet, we got ahead of them. These are some of the handiest tools you can bring with you, little bit of shears. Get your gear. Just don't clip your bowstring. <laughs> like I about did. Let's make a little blind here, get set up for the afternoon. Pretty breezy on this hilltop, but this is like the only spot. I wanted to set up down lower, closer to them, but the hill is such at an angle that I don't have a place to set up, the decoys wouldn't look right, and anything up here on the hill would be able to see me. At least this way, I'm up on the top of a hill. If anything's down below me, hopefully I can call, get them to answer, get them to come pique their curiosity and see the decoys. But if they're up top here, coming across this meadow, um, I'm hoping that they look down, see the decoys, and walk past me and don't see me. We'll see. But that's my plan. I'm gonna finish getting set up. So another handy tool that I use, anytime I set up like next to a fence line, I'm always worried about hitting the wire with my arrow. Uh, so if I can make a little gap, a little hole, uh, that works out. But I don't want to mess with the farmer or rancher's fence. I don't want to wire it shut. They don't appreciate that. So I use a carabiner. I just pinch the wires together. Voila, I've got a shooting hole, perfect. And that's my little blind. Just a few cedars I can sit behind, rest my bow right here, and then hopefully they work into the decoys while they're distracted, I make, I draw, and uh, I can make a good shot. They got a long, long ways to come. Like a long ways. So I've been watching these three turkeys for the past hour clear out in this green field about a mile away. Was convinced that it was the tom and two hens that I saw this morning. Then I kept looking at them. All three of them were hens. And then all of a sudden, there's our boy. I hope he doesn't see them. <laughs> I hope he eventually comes this way. I think if I call, maybe he'll see or hear the decoys and work his way up. I'm right by his roost, so it's a matter of time. Okay, this is gonna sound weird, but once he gets, he's right here. Once he gets below this hill, I'm gonna run out there, grab the decoys, and try to move them over just a little bit. My reason behind this is the sun is going to be setting right in the lens. And if he comes over that hill and sees that glare, I know that's going to spook him. So I'm going to wait until he crosses the gap where he is in the field, that green little spot. Once he gets below this rise right here, I'm going to sneak out there and move all the decoys and get ready. Okay, he's about to drop behind that rise right there. It's time for me to make my move. I'm gonna make dang sure he's down there first. Then I'll move.
was out in the field where the decoys are, calling the entire time. So he pinpoints that sound. He knows where these turkeys are. When he comes up, it won't surprise him that there's decoys right here. Also, I can move the... Oh, I'm winded. I can move the camera around so I'm not directly in the sunlight. And hopefully I can eliminate that glare. I think this will work if he commits. <laughs>
All right, so I'm gonna show you guys what I got set up here. Just set up in the fence line. Took a whole bunch of cedar branches that I clipped so I could sit back in this hole. Camoed out my camera as best I could. Got some grass piled in here. Used the carabiners, like I said, I've got two of them to space that wire out, making me a perfect hole to shoot. <sighs> Basically a yard sale, sale of all my stuff back in here, but <sighs> man, I love when a plan comes together. I saw him at about four, four or 500 yards away. It's the same Tom I set up this morning on. He gobbled his brains out coming in. He gobbled his brains out this morning. And right when he dropped below the crest of this hill, I ran out and moved all the decoys because that sun, if you couldn't tell, is glaring. And if it hits that lens, that oftentimes will <laughs> cause your hunt to be spoiled. But this time, I made the right call, made the right move. Fortunately, he didn't go fight the Dakota Jake or the DSD uh, breeder hen. He kept posturing around the upright and the feeder hen. And uh, finally, when he put his head behind the fan, I slid over real quick, ranged it 32 yards and sent it. Hit him a little high, anchored him right there. He flopped around and I put another one right in the, right in the pump station. <laughs> And I am tagged out in Iowa. That is number seven for me for spring 2021. <sighs> Although it was windy today, what a beautiful day. I'm so pumped. I was hoping that bird would make the same path back to his roost. This turkey is a hoss, a freaking giant. And I will show you what I mean. Don't mind the sun glare. Oh, oh my god. Look at the size of these spurs. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? Oh my, what a giant. What a giant bird that was. Ooh, careful with that brought in. Oh, what a bummer. And he busted that one clear off. Busted that one clear off. <laughs> oh, that one spur is the truth though. Goodness. And this is a stout bird. He is heavy, heavy, heavy. That shot anchored him for sure. Oh my, what a giant Iowa Eastern. Look at the size of that beard. What a paintbrush. <laughs> what a beautiful bird. Oh man. And he put on a show. And he put on a show. Just soaking it in. Wind finally died down. Might be the last hunt I do for the year. Well, it is the last tag I have right now, but what a cherry on top of an excellent year. Justin and I were able to make some incredible memories, incredible hunts. Hopefully you guys enjoy the episodes we bring you. Just very blessed, very, very lucky man. I have a wonderful, beautiful wife that supports me. Uh, best friend to go run around different states and do this with. So for that, I am very, very blessed and I am a very lucky man. And this is one of my biggest, biggest turkeys I've ever shot. So, well, it's been a journey. I'm glad you guys were with us here spring 2021. Um, we'll be looking into some fish this summer. Probably won't film that. Uh, but then we got antelope, mule deer, and whitetail to look forward to as well. We're always hunting, always thinking about hunting and enjoying God's creation. And I'm enjoying it and soaking it in now.